Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we are going to look at this SLX 5X Prism Scope Gen 3 from the company Primary Arms. Now this was a gift from one of my good friends. He offered this to me, he said, hey, I'm not gonna use this. Would you like to take it? It's brand new in the box. And actually on top of that, he also has a kill flash that he's going to be giving me for this. So all in all, very, very awesome gift. I greatly appreciate that. So if you're watching, Jay, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. But today, what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at this in preliminary detail. I'm going to go through all the features, get an understanding for it. I'm going to get it mounted up to my Ruger Mini 14. I hope this is going to be a reasonable option for that firearm. I kind of really do want this to work because I feel like it will give me exactly what I want for not just this scope, but for my Mini 14. So generally speaking, I think it's gonna be a great option for me. I like that it's a five times optic. I like that it has the ability to also mount potentially a red dot on the top, and that's gonna give me some distance, that's gonna give me some close quarters, and that's gonna give me exactly what I really hope to get out of my Ruger Mini 14. And so again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get into this in detail, we're gonna go through the actual optic itself, we're gonna get it mounted to the rifle, and then I'm gonna take it to the range for some practical field use. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you, and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. So as we get into this, keep in mind the fact that a couple things. One, this has already been opened. So even though this is new, uh, it's not literally factory fresh out of the box. The other thing to consider is I am certainly not an expert by any means. I am just an enthusiast. So if I you know, say the wrong thing or call things the wrong thing or I don't have all the details. Well, that just comes with the territory. So, you know, this is coming from the enthusiast perspective, certainly not from the expert perspective. But here you can see, again, this has the ACSS Aurora reticle. Uh, this is just a nice uh, overall size. It's a five times optical uh, magnification. They do have a number of different sort of magnifications depending on your needs. Now is five times going to be the right uh, optical sort of magnification for me? I don't know. We're going to find out. I mean, that's part of the fun of all of this. But, you know, I gotta say, I mean, I'm just so thrilled to have this in my hands and thankful for my buddy who provided it for me. Now, a couple of things that really caught my attention right away. This is fairly compact. Uh, the nice thing too is it has the flip up caps, which is awesome. So very convenient and easy and fast. This has actually dual illumination. So as you take a look here, you can see on this upper turret here, you do have the sort of adjustment for brightness, but red and green illumination. In the middle when it's zero, it's got an etched reticle, which is awesome. Then here on your actual adjustment turrets, you can see your elevation adjustment, your windage adjustment. These are captured. So as you take this off, you'll notice that it does have like sort of this rubber grommet. Now I've moved these a few times already and you just kind of need to force your way past some of the resistance of the rubber. And if you do that, you just need to be careful because it will pop off. So that is one thing that I think is just a little bit uh, worth considering the fact that, you know, these rubber sort of catches here, they do keep everything where you need it. But at the same time, it kind of creates resistance. And then if you spin this past the resistance, they can fall off. But all in all, I mean, very simple. You'll notice here, nice and large adjustment. We're going to have to get into this. So this will be part of the review. I don't know if these are truly like tactile and audible. I'm not really too sure. I got to look and see what kind of adjustment these are, whether they're, you know, quarter click MOA or something like that. I'm not too sure, but I will find out certainly later in this video for those details. And now as I'm trying to thread this back on, you'll notice it kind of got caught. And now I'm being careful to kind of spin this past that rubber catch there and that little keeper. And at this point, it does go pretty smooth. So, uh, you know, just something to consider. The other thing that I found is this one here on the elevation adjustment is a little bit tight. 
uh, you don't have a lot of room for your fingers and especially if you eventually do mount another type of red dot that might be a little bit difficult so again you know practice and field use will prevail but as I kind of go easy here and get things going at this point that does come off fairly well you just you're not going to be able to work too quickly because again you know this little keeper can fall off or you're just going to create a bunch of friction and bind everything up. But there you can see, no problem. So again, your uh, you know elevation adjustment should be easy to get on. Even if you do have an optic, I would suggest using a, um, and I guess you would call it a hollow ground bit. You can see a nice, straight, and just you know well-defined channel for a flat screwdriver. I would suggest definitely using something hollow ground so that it fits in nicely and you don't actually create wear on your turret. And here's one of those situations where I'm trying to get the cap back on and you'll notice that keeper is spinning on me. So I kind of need to like just futz with it a little bit, make sure I get everything just where it needs to be and it's still twisting. So that's one thing that right away I found I'm not a huge fan of. But you just kind of got to go with it. And at this point, I got it moving in the right direction. So a little bit finicky there. Um, but once I get this really sighted in, it shouldn't be a big deal. And that shouldn't be anything that I need to mess with too, too much, especially because of the quality reticle on the inside. If you take a look at the mount on the bottom, basically a standard pick rail mount. Now, this is an upgrade over prior models. So again, this is the Gen 3. If you look at prior iterations, they had a number of different ways of going about mounting the base plate. This base plate can be removed if you wanted to mount the optic lower. I am probably not going to do that. I feel like the height here is going to work well for me. You do have these oversized star bit driven screws that are going to tighten everything down. So those bolts there, and it does come with a nice quality key. So as you take a look here, just a nice quality tool comes with this. This is something that you'd probably want to keep in your range bag if you're going to use this optic and really keep it as part of your kit. But generally speaking, very nice. Coming down to the tools, you do have a couple of extra tools. So you end up with another sort of uh, hex key here and then some star bits on this little driver. That's going to help with some of the additional accessories and things like, for example, the removable upper pick rail. I will not be removing it because for me, that's going to be instrumental in my final setup. And just to point out that this comes with a cleaning cloth, a couple of little informational cards your user's manual. So both a user's manual for the scope itself, but a detailed manual for the ACSS Aurora and what they're calling the dual red-green reticle. So this is a fairly substantial reticle. That could be a video on its own. I'm probably just going to hit the highlights and not go into terrible detail. Then after practice, hopefully I'll be, you know, wise enough and knowledgeable enough to give you a good rundown. And that might be a second video about this. But in general, as we go through this, I will try to demonstrate to the best of my ability... The reticle on the inside, you can see here, now illuminated red. It's really just that tiny little chevron that lights up. And then the rest of it is etched. And as I turn my dial, that will do both the intensity and then also the color. So you can see that intensity getting brighter and brighter on the red. And then as we pop over to the green... The green on the inside there, you can see again, the chevron is now green. I really do like green optics. I've been finding that my eyes see it very well. And when I get the option of red or green, I've been trying to buy the green. So that does seem to work very well. Now this does leverage a CR2032 lithium ion battery, which you can see is really very simple on the top here. You just simply remove that cover with a coin. A little more research now indicates that the actual click on each one of the turrets will be a one third MOA adjustment. We'll see how it goes once I mount this, but the eye relief 2.5 to 3 inches. An overall field of view at 100 yards of 18.8 feet. Again, this is a prism scope and it has the illuminated reticle. Five times magnification on this particular model. 
the ACSS Aurora 556M reticle, which is awesome. So again, my Mini 14 being in 556, so they should be very compatible. Now, of course, it doesn't need to specifically pair up with 556, but that will definitely help in overall accuracy and at distance due to the ballistics of a 556 round. And this weighs in at 18.4 ounces, which is a little more than a pound. So there's some good weight to this, a little bit of heft. Now, when you take a look, the actual objective lens, that is a 36 millimeter objective lens. As you take a look at the inside, you'll notice that it is threaded, which will allow me to put that kill flash. So that's gonna help. I will probably install that. Now, I don't necessarily need a kill flash, but I found that with other optics that I've used, it really didn't bother me at all having it there and kind of, I don't know, and maybe I, I'm overthinking things, but in my opinion, kind of better to have it than to not. So I will probably install that and just leave it installed. I'm assuming this is an aluminum body. I just can't find the details as to what grade it is, but it does have this nice quality, you know, sort of hard coat anodized black finish. Just a real good look overall. Clean, nice aesthetic, pretty simple, little bit of weight to it, but very nice. So at this point, let's get this mounted up and we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to get this out to the range.